Planet Crafter. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words. A space survival open world terraforming crafting game. Transform the ecosystem of a hostile planet to make it livable for humans. Survive, collect, build your base, then create oxygen, heat and pressure to make a brand new biosphere. Yes guys, this is one of them little gems. It's a little gem guys. Um, it's one of them great little indie games that come across now and then. It's still in early access. We don't really know where it's going to end up but so far so good definitely worth a buy straight out of the gate it's it's overwhelmingly positive which means nothing on steam but it just this one actually is a really good game it's been perfect for me having covid uh, just to kind of chillax out to um whilst suffering the old sneezy wheezy coffee uppies um yeah which i've still got so you start off on, on this big open world red planet uh, in a little tiny escape pod, uh, basically you're a convict. Uh, you are wanted for heinous crimes, which I don't know what they are. But instead of getting executed, you says, no, 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 ship me off as punishment to this planet by myself and I will terraform it. Hey, I'd do that f***er for now to get off clown world that we're on now. Honestly, I'm sick of it. Honestly, the amount of shite that they're trying to push down your f***ing throat. So as you emerge from your little tiny space thing, uh, you have to start crafting shit and there's minerals lying everywhere. There's iron, there's magnesium, titanium, cobalt, just lying there. Everything, a special little shape and colour so you know exactly what it is. And you go and just harvest it, really. And then you take that raw material and you can craft it into all manner of things. Tons and tons of stuff to craft and do. Big bases, bio labs, chemical labs, backpacks, jetpacks, agility boots, all kinds of shit that you can make. Um, upgrading the upgrades of the upgrades, guys. There's just a load of stuff, an absolute load of stuff to craft. But as the planet's so hostile at the minute, you have to be careful with your progression. You've got to make these little outposts all over the planet so you can traverse the planet. Uh, because your oxygen doesn't last very long, especially early game. So you have to keep kind of leapfrogging into these little tiny bases that you make all over the place. So that you can explore the planet and there's different biomes on the planet. There's also a lot of crashed, smashed up spaceships that some of them look like they've been there for centuries. And you go inside them and you can explore them. And there's chests to be had where there's loot that's essential. Essential, it's actually absolutely essential that early game you go out exploring because there's loads of food to be found and water inside of these ships. You can craft your own water early on, um, but you can't craft food. That's about a mid-game thing, so you have to you have to search. Then you'll start building your base up. Um, you'll get better building blocks to make it bigger and better. Uh, you have to power it with different types of um, power. There's wind, there's solar, and then nuclear and fusion and all kinds of stuff later on in the game. You've got to uh, use heaters to heat the planet up, uh, heat the atmosphere up, which melts the ice caps in certain parts of the planet that allows access into caves that's full of really special loot. The, the loot's all tiered. There's different types of tiers of loot. But the amazing thing is um, lakes start to form on the planet and moss and grass and trees and everything as you start growing these things. And it, it's very important not to build your base on a dry lake bed, which is what I did. I built my first base on this, on this rise on the dry lake bed and I thought, oh, that's a great place. It's a little cool three-story base and I can see everything because it's a bit raised up uh, until the waters came. And that lake got fuller and fuller. And then eventually I got trapped in my bloody base and had to smash the base up just to get out alive. And now it's just a, a little monument to where my first base actually stood. In fact, the, the little landing craft that you come down in the escape pod is now well deep at the bottom of the lake. Uh, such has the, the water risen over the years that I've been terraforming the planet. And as you can see, that the planet's now lush green, especially in this area where I'm at. This is where I'm doing all the work at the moment. I'm setting down tree planters, flower planters, grass planters. I'm firing rockets into the atmosphere, releasing biomass. Um, I'm firing rockets in to attract iridium asteroids and uh, things like that so that I can get a good flow of, of the rare materials. It's yeah, You have to do everything, and it's such a joy watching the whole planet change to this lush green and see all the 
trees sprouting out and to see the deep blue lakes come it's just got when you think of how awful and dusty and dry and unhospitable it was when i first got here and all the hard work i've put in has just changed all this in your base you've got all kinds of things you've got storage areas you've got uh, labs bio labs you can do dna engineering and things of plants creating different types of trees you've got big storage areas you've got advanced crafting areas but i think the most important thing that you have on the base is your little control area where you have all your little screens this shows you where you are with your power levels shows you where you are with your terraforming it shows you what what stage of terraforming you're up to as well and it's it's kind of gone over really smoothly the 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 kind of balance of time and work that you put into the um, rewards that you get has all been good until I got to trees and then that the, it just kind of went off the scale with grind and I'm up to insects and it's just crazy at the minute. Uh, you have to build a shit ton of drills, you have to send a shit ton of rockets out into the atmosphere and a shit ton of uh, biomass and oxygen and heat uh, just to push the terra farming forward and um, that can, I think it's way too grindy to be honest um it's it's hardly even moving where i'm at now i've got to build a ton of stuff so i mean it's not that it isn't fun but i just think that the learning curve's a bit imbalanced at this point um for me anyway now as you're progressing through the game you, you start not really needing the early materials and you're wanting the really expensive high-end materials and so you you get better machinery to mine it from caves that you've explored so you have these huge ore refiners inside of caves and um, you just shred all the waste that you don't want and you just extract the good stuff out of that and that allows you to send more rockets up it allows you to make better materials to, to plant trees and do your bioengineering and things like that which is really fun to do where it goes from here i don't know um it there is an element of danger you can of course run out of oxygen early on and that you will a couple of times you'll get greedy and you'll die um, you can run out of water and die as well. If you do die, your materials that you carry on you, depending on the difficulty level of the game, I think, uh, they just appear in a little box where you died, so you don't really lose anything. Some meteorite storms can kill you if they hit you. Um, there's one in particular when the whole sky goes purple, the purple rain comes down. When that happens, you've got to run for your life and get into cover because there's, it's just like bullets coming down. Hail. And each one of them, if it hits you, will take about 80% of your health off. So you have to be very careful with that. But other than that, there's no real danger in the game. And that's a bit of a problem. I would have liked to have seen some kind of life on the planet. Um, remember Forbidden Planet? Altair. Whoa. Robbie the Robot. Remember that? Some of you will, some of you won't. Well, that had the creature from the id, or monster from the id, or whatever it was called. This invisible beast. I don't know it was the guy's mind, but uh, this invisible beast just prowling the planet. I'd love that. Something like that. That's just out there, like predatory kind of silhouette -y. so you can't really see it but ooh, what was that did i just see something out the corner of my eye there when you're going around and, and have like a perimeter fence around your base maybe it's, you know with a laser kind of barrier up there so it can't get in but when you go out you've got to be careful i'd love something like that maybe it's not that you have to fight from it just you have to just run from it and you can hear it that would be cool stuff like that but i, I mean we have a lot of games where you have you know danger like that maybe it's Maybe it's time we just had a game where there isn't that. I don't know. I'm just sort of thinking out loud. What I do know is Planet Crafter is just a fantastically fun, addictive game to play. It looks nice as well. It does have a bit of pop in, quite a bit of pop in when you're flying around on your tier 3 jetpack. It, it, it doesn't spoil it, but it, it looks a bit shit when rocks just start appearing in front of you. Um, so I'd like to see that fixed. But it is early access. Uh, it's got a, quite a way to go yet. So we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it finishes co-op would be fantastic in this as well um it would share the, the burden a bit and i think a bit of balancing in in order as well but there you go guys planet crafter is definitely one to watch definitely worth picking up now in my opinion definitely worth a buy